Yeah, on Facebook, I don't trust. Um, on Facebook, I don't trust. What don't I trust? I don't trust that when you go landscape, that it, that it, um, that it what? That it holds. I think when it's done recording, when you play it back, so they see oh, upside down. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So we're live on TikTok, live on my Facebook, Facebook, and live on your Instagram. All right, cool. I need to get something. I'm sweating. For your stress and for nothing. Yeah, she is okay. Is that the thing? That thing is live. Hold on, man. Like people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok the does an amazing numbers. So the cool thing about TikTok is that you ask people on TikTok when they when they jump on to to tap. Yeah. If they tap like on their screen, it like Ibiza or Makelo and it lets other people on TikTok know no I'm way. watching this live. So if you tell people like just tap like tap on like likes, I should also go live on Instagram. Okay, my Facebook's here. There's a Facebook back. Guys on TikTok, please can you tap the like? Hi, brother. Hi, brother. Please tap the likes um, so that we can get as many people on this live as possible. Myself and Pinson want to give side. you guys like a small anya and a report back on uh, our trip to Orania in, yeah. in the Bua Karua uh, in the Northern Cape and just some of the things that stood out for us. I'm still going to be making another was it a Facebook. It keeps reconnecting. I'm not sure why. I think I know why because Mark Zuckerberg is a whatever mm. he is. Okay. We've got close to over 800 likes on my TikTok, so that's pretty dope. Going to 900. TikTok for me, fool. We've got people on my Facebook, and then we've got people on your Instagram. Okay. I think you can go. Pin and pin, always. Hey, it didn't connect. Didn't connect. It was a bit. It was a bit. Didn't connect. Didn't connect. Didn't connect. Let's go. What up? It's pin and pin. What up? What up? Chilling with Tobias and Shotwa, and we've got a ghost lady. Ghost lady. What do you identify as? Ghost woman. Oh, he identifies as a ghost woman. Spit to Exo ghost, here. Ghost woman. The exorcist Kailam is chilling in the back. We had to steal one of his chairs to put like one of the phones up, but we hope you guys will appreciate it. I think we'll start with Penson. Yeah. Uh Murray, Damas and Yera. Opiri Dunstag et ons na Oranje Tugarai met the bus. If you can give a report back like we did at school on, on, on Maybe we'll start on Tuesday and I'll jump in from there. With Oranya. Yes, I wasn't ready for that. Um, I'm also changing your voice, Bob. I mean, I'm going to be checking some of the comments here. You know, when you check the comments. I, I, I think you, you, you're never ready. So you never really prime your, 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 your mind. I know I didn't. I wasn't calling you. You can speak to your Instagram. I'm saying hello to my people. Oh, so was a, so you, when, when, when you saying okay, you're going to Oranya, you never really prime your, your, your mind. You never really ready or think about it. So, I mean, what I didn't do is that I didn't do the research. I only did the research when we were there, you know. So, I didn't research anything. I just was like, okay, no, shop, whatever. Let's just go. I bro. I bro. I, 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 I. That's how you start your story. Don't go to yes. Oranya. Start with Tuesday. Yes. What was the plan? Where are we going? It's not in Fnukulu. No, if it's given. Remember in high school? In high school, you'd get there and be like, on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, we gathered outside Newcastle High School to go to the bus. We were very excited and our parents packed us like I learned a little bit optimistic. No, no, when we got to right. Lady Smith, you were the girls, bro. I was you were the girls. I was the girls. You already were like when I got to Orani. No, I said I only started researching sorry. when I got to Orani. Sorry to That's what I said. Sorry to Penson's people. Let two on Roger, we clap it in. So pen and pen, trip to Orania, take two. So again, going back to what I was saying, it was really interrupted. I didn't do any research leading up. I only started doing the research when I got there. Yeah. That so we left. Let me cheat alone. We left at about what? 11? 11. Yes. 11. Um, again, having researched the distance and how long it takes to actually get to Oranya. You know. So we left to for Bloom uh, with Ulungelo Exo and the guys from Travel Media House. So shout out to the guys from Otto Sizwe and Nupra Tebza. Um, Sizwe drove us the whole way, which yeah, was yeah. amazing. All the way to Plumfontein. All the way to Oranya, in fact. We're starting on Tuesday. Yeah, okay, so. Left, Tuesday, driving to Bloom, long drive, tired, food in the bus, I mean, in, in the combi, in the H1. What, 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 what do I say about the trip? It's a trip. We're driving, it's a trip. Get to Bloom. Uh, slept over in Bloom, which was also great. 
walked around the mall. That's their order for the feedback. Yeah, your oh, report back sucks. I want to get to Oranya. We, wake up, we woke up early at 5 on Wednesday to get to Oranya. That's the juicy part. You know, so, and Oranya being three hours away from Bloom. So now the, the, the tension. I only started reading up on Oranya that Tuesday evening when I was in Bloom. And I started listening and watching things about Oranya. Then I started to get nervous. Bildung. 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 Hey, I did well to not fucking eat that bultong. You chowed that bultong. I didn't, I didn't no. fucking smut, I didn't eat you any fucking bites. bultong. You chowed the chili bites? No, there was three of us that I didn't have. There was finished. Of, you chowed, you didn't chowed. I chowed fuck all. Now I'm going to eat the bultong and I'm going to eat the bultong. I'm going to eat the bultong. So anyways, um, we were supposed to go to Oranya last year. I was invited by the Eidfurende Hoof from the Oranya Beweging. Uh, Joost Stredom, he is the leader of Afri Forum. I mean, of, not Afri Forum. He is the leader of Oranje now. He's the chief executive officer of the Oranje movement. I'd been speaking to him for a couple of months. Um, he'd invited me to come through. I was really excited to go through, but because of planning and some of my other travels and other work, we couldn't make it last year. And we were actually going to go with the guys from Amt, Abu Sia, Abu Mbali. Uh, I think um, Tumi was also going to go at the time, and maybe Swaggy now. But then the guys at Tribal Media, because of the planning that happened now, were like, look, we want the panel show, uh, look and feel and finish. So for the past couple of weeks, we've been planning. I've been going back and forth with you straight on. And we finally, finally found dates to accommodate us, which was the 6th to the 8th of February, 2024. We organized, uh, or rather Utebza organized a vehicle. We had an H1 Hyundai. We got a trailer because it's a lot of equipment. The guys at Tribal Media House, because they are so professional and because they always want to be world class. Uh, to be fully honest, no shade, no shade, uh, with all humility, I think the panel show is the best quality podcast on the African continent and arguably one of the best podcasts in terms of quality, like the visuals and the audio in the world. The only podcast I can think of that maybe like could be slightly better than us is Chris Williamson. I don't think Stephen Bartlett's better than us. I don't think Lex Friedman. I don't even think Ubabua and Micho Rogan is better than us or Patrick Bet David. Chris Williamson's podcast is pretty sweet. I think, I think we're somewhere up there. So the guys wanted to take all the equipment, all the equipment to Aranya. So we had this huge trailer, lighting, these are my see stands, um, cameras, um, all these weird gadgets that I don't know. I didn't study it after, so I don't understand film. But oh, EXO, RTB7 and Tagati Films and the guys at Tribal. Um, they packed this thing. Pinson, they packed everything. They packed everything. Penson wanted to come through because he likes Afrikaners. Okay. Afrikaners has placed it on the buyer from Cook Sisters. This lekker room to keir, word. This lekker room to keir. On the buyer from Cook Sisters and Mount Tert. So Penson wanted to come through. I wasn't actually sure why he wanted to come through. No, no, the time didn't have it. I actually thought he wanted to shoot a podcast or maybe interview some people. And look, we, we don't really know this online social media thing much. But I think as we develop in this space, we're going to learn how to get maybe body cams, those nice little clip-on mics, yeah. just so that, especially in a place like Oranyu, you can walk around speaking to Abashal, you know, the unwillingness, mm -hmm. the people there, how's Oranyu, how do you feel, you know, maybe even go live. It would have been nice if we could have gone live fully so that you guys have like an immersive experience. Mm -hmm. And have like a question and answer session with the band. Have a Q&A yeah. session for you guys, but we're gonna learn, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's all, we're going to Oranya, we had to respect the town, we didn't know what to expect. Um, but Tuesday we decided to sleep in Bloemfontein because from here, Joburg to Bloemfontein is, it is four hours. Is it Bloemfontein? Bloemfontein, Bloemies, Bloemfontein. Mangaung. Bloemfontein. I, I call it Bloemfontein. Oh, okay. Bloemfontein. Bloemfontein. It's probably okay. Bloemfontein because it's Afrikaans. So we went to uh, Bloemfontein uh, four hours from Bloemfontein to Orania is another two hours for 48 minutes, so about three, three hours. hours. So it's, it's about seven hours. So I was like, yeah, it's proper far. Let's cut it in half or sort of let's split the trip so that Wednesday morning we wake up fresh, get to Orania and, and do our business. The trip was amazing. Yeah. We didn't listen to music. We were chatting the whole way. Sizwe Dube involved, Homoto Morobe involved Exo exorcist Kayalami, involved previously known as Ntutu Okaba, Aban Basen Ntutu, Mayen Kwele Dimal, Ntutu Okaba. Usei Visa Mo Exorcist Kayalami, Usei Visa Mo Exorcist Kayalami, Usei Visa Mo Exorcist Kayalami, 
Nah, I'm going to go to the house. Uh, am I forgetting anyone? Pinson Locho was there, Pinum Locho was there. And we were quite excited, man. Yeah. Um, many, many people that we told about the trip who were nervous. Very nervous for us. We were like, say, I was nervous on, on the, in the morning. On the Wednesday. Yeah, one on the Wednesday, when everything now comes through, because now you, I've watched the clips, I've watched this, and now all the, the, the layout of what Oranya is, what we've been told in the media, and the this and the that. I know. I could say, okay, no shot. And I could sense it amongst the machita. Because in the morning, even though it was the Abuna guys' chairs and what's what, it was a lot uh, quieter. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was a lot quieter. And, and even the discussions in, in, in the car was quite different. But yeah, I'm nice. Slep, slept at a road lodge near the Bloemfontein airport. Got really great hospitality. We don't have much money, so we can't stay at like fancy hotels. But like, hopefully one day when you guys start subscribing and sending us proper money, then we'll be able to stay at like better places. But the road lodge was pretty dope. We had an amazing, amazing chiller session in the evening, talking politics. Guys were having drinks because we stopped at Mimosa Mall at Bloemfontein. We got supper there at Spur. Guys at Spur, I had steers. I think what Debs I had uh, Panarotis. What? <laughs> pizza. Answer the question. Answer this question. Pizza. Pizza is a Panarotis when you buy the rib. I don't know what it's called. It's a rib pizza. Rib. <laughs> rib. Why the rib? When you buy the rib pizza, they literally <laughs> give you this gang. It's like an actual like rib, like yo, not like rib, like boneless ribs, like a rib. I was like rib, like a rib. Um, I'm gonna answer this question about COVID. Sure. So yeah. we, we uh, stopped at Mimosa, bought some groceries as well, went to Road Lodge, slept over. You know, it was a pretty cool trip. We caught up. Jens got to know each other a bit more. Spoke about females as well. Just want to thank, before I forget, the wife of Utibu Khokibine, uh, who packed us an amazing, amazing picnic uh, basket uh, in a cooler bag with fruits, goodies, yeah. nuts, chips. Hey, shut down, bro. Waters, powering. Ukshat, agu is busi. Ukshat, agu is busi. Ukshat. They were well looked after. They were well looked after. We yeah. stopped in, I think it was Finterberg. Fintersburg. Something like that. It's Jens funny. wanted to stop at some butchery place to, to buy bolt on. En route to Plum. En route to Plum. Caesar Dube fucking slipped on the gravel and we saw his bombs. I don't expose that one too much. Hey, why are you not going to do that? Oh, because. <laughs> So but the trip was like a man. Yeah. Got to bloom slip nicely. Please answer your people. So no, 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 we're, we're live. The, so, we're live so, on Pinson's Instagram. We're live on my Facebook, and we're live on my TikTok as well. So on so, my TikTok, we're on five thousand six hundred likes. Love you guys a lot, man. Two dogs. So so the, so the nice thing about this question is that it's, we're gonna answer it because he's asking about how Oranya sustains itself, especially during times like your COVID. Do they ask for relief funds? So we're gonna answer it within the chat later. about Oranya. Okay, yeah. and I'm sorry I can't read all your comments and stuff. I'm hoping that some of the people that are on our Fender Store, Olorato came through the Fender Store. We won't be able to read all of your stuff and, and we apologize for that. But we're just trying to engage as informally as, as possible. Yeah. Woensdag ochtend is ons lekker vroeg, vroeg, fris om oranje toe te rij met die manne, met die bulle. <laughs> so we wake up Wednesday morning, 5 a.m. Ready at it. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing, guys. Azzi, you can prepare for something. You can prepare for something until you experience it. So you can read about swimming. You can watch people swimming. Until you get into that pool, that dam, that river, that ocean, it's a totally different experience. You know? So you're driving for three hours. I don't even know what the road is called. You're driving for three hours. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I didn't check the road. That's something that's actually swag with us. We're supposed to know these roads because real men will tell you, "Oh, we're on the R three six nine and the N twelve." Uh, uh, that's it. You know, we just GPS. I'm not going to this space. I'm going to shoot. I just get set up. Right. Just to shoot. It's, I think it's quite dope. Yeah, it is. So again, we're driving. Shout out Sizwe who drove us again. Sizwe drove it all the way. You know, taking pictures like you know, obviously fanboys of little signs or running x many kilometers. This and this, Hope Town, X many kilometers. I'm listening to you, sorry. I just want to help you with yeah. the picture. X many kilometers. So all those cool things, we're doing all those fun things. Um, and I don't think it hit us until we actually saw that sign that said Hope Town, 40 kilometers, Oranya, 8. There's a, there's a, a sign of VTG. It's off the board. It's on the floor. It's faded. Oh. And guess what it has in it? 
Bullet. It has fucking bullet holes. Bullet holes. Hope Town, Orania, bullet holes in the sign. That's where now you start like, okay, trembling no just a little yeah. bit. Where we were I trembling going? just a little bit. What is going on here? What got on here? Understand that a place like Orania is a place that is by them, for them. And it's a place that is not just a stumble upon place. You're not just going to accidentally drive through Orania. So you need to go out of your way to a place that is actually for them. You know, so it's like, um, I don't know, a, 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 a monastery, what's it called? Monastery. 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 Yeah. 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 It's like out of the way. So you have to be very intentional to go there because there's easier ways to get to Hope Town. You don't have to go through Orania. To get to Hope Town. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't just randomly, you don't randomly go to Orania like, oh, I well, always oh, pass there. Just, you yeah. actually must intentionally be driving mm. to Orania. I think even Hope Town and Pietrasville are not places that like a random yeah, person goes to. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, people miss. go to Kimberley. People obviously go to Bloom. Yeah. Hey, but outside of that, if you want to go to Orania, you need to actually be intentional about about going there. Yeah. So. And then when we got to that sign, so they've got a sign made out of cement, like a huge sign outside of Orania, like the blocks yeah, of the letters. Yeah, like 500 meters outside of Orania, just saying Orania. And you're looking at this place, you drive in, you see a welcome to Orania. Obviously, us fanboys, we went outside, we took the signs, we took the pictures, we did all of these things. And then we drove in. You know, Orania again is split by a the national road. What is it called? Yeah. A national I, road. I, I don't think it's a national road. It's one of those regional roads. But yeah, it's a region, but it's a but it's, it's a proper highway. It's a public road. It's a um, public road. Yeah. So Orania is then split into two. You've got Orania East on the right and Orania West um, on the on the left. And then you know we then then took a left uh, to US offices uh, yeah. where we could meet up with US and uh, get uh, formally introduced and then discuss the itinerary. Yeah, we got to the Inlichtingskantoor, which is the information office. The first thing that blew my mind, and I asked many times, from what I thought I knew about Orania and what I thought I'd seen in videos, yeah. there is no fence, there is no border wall, there is no... You know when you get to an estate, if you guys have ever been to Stain City, um, I can't think of another estate that's popular. If, you, if you've ever been to an estate, you go to like a security fence, a security wall, yeah. where the security asks, who are you? ID, they come with their little gadgets and they boop, 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 your license disc. Well, you and, then, visit, and then they whatever. call whoever you're going to visit yeah. to give you a code. Or, Orania doesn't have that. Orania is open. Yeah. What do you mean, Penzo? What I mean is you can take your car now, drive to Orania, you'll see the nice sport, welcome in Orania. When you get into Orania, it's like any other town. You, you see shops. If you take a left by the shops, you're entering the town. There's no security there is no people with guns there is no fit no one checks mm. you just drive it's in like you, you in small town now yeah. i thought i thought that was Cause crazy yeah because because again you have all these preconceived things you're yeah. with yo here i'm about to see guys on horseback you know carrying machine guns whatever the case may be and when you get there you sit down obviously then met yours took cameras and then went for a coffee you know um very con what canteen Oh, the canteen is like canteen. a little restaurant there yeah. in Orania. They're close to the main road. Yeah, right there on the main road. So again, if you're driving through Orania, you can sit down there and have a coffee coffee. Um, took, took, a, took a nice picture that Valcom and Orania signed. Decided to post it immediately on my X, on my Twitter. I think it's currently sitting at, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably close to 300,000 views, yes. which is pretty dope. So many nice. haters. Oh, cause haters, haters say what? Haters are my motivators. So many haters are like, yeah, they're gonna shoot you guys. You're not gonna but come you guys back. Are too cute, babe. Re Rest in. Like, you compliment it, like, no, 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 I'm not gonna be sidetracked. As a compliment, uh, compliment. But then a lot of people, you know, a lot of a lot of Afrikaans people, very nice in the comments. You're gonna have a good time in Orania. Please come back and let us know how was your experience. Uh, please, you know, make some dope content from there. We can't hear to wait from. Uh, we can't wait to hear from you, which is part of what we're kind of doing now. Um, and we were excited, man. And like I said, Eust has been nothing but amazing in his hospitality. And when we got there, he welcomed us. Uh, he told us where to park. And then we eventually got into the Orania bus, put us in his yeah. car so that we could, we could start our tour. Guys started getting their equipment. We had a, a gimbal, the camera, just for a roaming camera for cutaways, like mm. shots, what, what. 
Um, we had a lekker coffee at the canteen. Uh, we didn't uh, eat at that time. No, we didn't eat. Did we eat? Oh, we ate lunch later. We ate lunch later. Okay, so we had a lekker kopi coffee uh, at the canteen. Um, and then we just planned our day, basically. Um, and then from there, we hit the road. Yeah. And we started touring the Dorp. Van Oranje, so, so the first thing le- I noticed, with a lekker tour guide called so, Joost Stredel. So the first thing I noticed is that Joost carries a weapon, you know, like again, to a person who doesn't notice these things, because that's one of the things that I wanted to see about this, this place with the safety. I'm watching who's carrying weapons, how many they are, how often they are. I'm looking at this place because I'm trying to, one, find an exit strategy, be prepared, and two, just to understand how they view security. You know, he came, he, he told us this amazing quote about the Spartans, because Ulunga you had asked why there aren't any walls, you know, and he said, Wuti, when a neighboring king or a neighboring uh, visitor who visited the, the Sparta asked, Wuti, where are your high walls? You know, uh, the commander of the Spartans pointed to the, to, to, to the men and said, there's the walls of Sparta, talking to the soldiers, you know. So again, he, a place like Oranya prides themselves in having manly men, and that's what we saw, you know. So a lot of the guys they carry weapons. Um, it's not just Oranya; it's a, it's an Afrikaner thing. <laughs> it's also a taxi a taxi driver thing. Yeah. Uh, taxi drivers, taxi owners, and Afrikaners like same WhatsApp group. Uh, it's men that believe in defending their families, men that believe in defending their assets and their people. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a great quote. Uh, the Spartan yeah. king was asked, "If this is the great Sparta, where are your walls?" And the Spartan king looked and said, there are walls there, our men. Our men are our walls, and as far as their spears can, can go. It is our territory. Oh. 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 You know, that was dope. But yeah, man, like, um, guys, Oranya is not what you guys think. It's, first and foremost, what, what really, really blew my mind is how clean this town is. I cannot stress what I mean by that. It is immaculately clean. Like, it's immaculate. It, you, like, there's even, they, they sweep the, the roads are, are swept. They sweep it the is, roads. It is so, well, so clean. It's also desert. <laughs> yeah. There's sand there every day because it's surrounded by desert. Guys, but they clean the roads all day, every day. The, the people, so the, the flag of Oranya is a, is a young boy with his sleeves rolled or rolling up his sleeves. You know, so for them, they believe in the concept of hard, hard manual labor. The people of Oranya, as we're driving around, uh, as you're as showing us the town, I'm taken aback by seeing white Afrikaans people sweeping the streets. I'm taken aback at seeing white Afrikaans men building, building the homes, you know, like... Mixing, c- mixing cement, mixing cement, laying the brick in the garden, things that we are accustomed to seeing black labor, for them it's Afrikaans labor, you know, so from sweeping the streets, from cleaning the, the, the yards, from mowing the lawns, from being construction workers, it is 100% Afrikaans people. So there's no uh, 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 domestic worker of uh, prudence who's the cleaning the toilets. No. They clean their own toilets. They Everything that you have seen, every brick that has been laid, every little thing that you can fathom has been the hands of white Afrikaans people. Yeah. Their own. So they don't outsource it. It's not like, oh, let's get cheap Afrikaans labor from Bloom to Bodia. Let's get cheap Afrikaans labor from Hope Town. It is them. The yeah. people that own the economy, the people that run the economy, the people that own the homes, the farmers, you name them, from the architects that live there, from the doctors that are there, whatever the case may be, they are the ones that also clean their own toilets. They are the ones that sweep their own streets. They are the ones that built their own homes. They didn't, they didn't hire a construction company. They built their own homes. So you must build it. It's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy when you have to think about that. And then the question is, would I be able to do that? Would I be able to live a life where in my home, everything from washing my clothes to cleaning my, my to washing my car to cutting my hair to is just purely run and done by me and people that look exactly like me. You know, I outsource so much. If I want fiber in my home, I outsource that. If I want to have a solar keys in my home, I outsource that. Whatever I need, I outsource. They can't and they don't. It's crazy. I need to add this small disclaimer. Uh, Penson and I come from a town called Newcastle. Probably the greatest town in South Africa. Uh, shout out to, to your pop little town that comes after. 
Um, in Newcastle, we were exposed very much to white Afrikaners. Uh, my mom, Umamsi, was a school teacher. She moved us out of Emadadeni Township. We moved to Arbor Park. From Arbor Park, we moved to Central. But from primary school, studied at, uh, I, went, I went to Chelmsford Primary, a colored school in Fairley. From there, went to Newcastle Junior Primary. Penton started there, Busy B. Busy B. From there, Newcastle Senior Primary, and then Newcastle High School. I started grade three, standard one at the time, in 1993, if not 94, the first time we were allowed to integrate. So we were like largely the first black in many different things. Like some of the first black kids to play first team rugby, some of the first black head prefects, those kind of things. And in those spaces, it was still very much dominated by Afrikaners, white Afrikaners, and still a lot of racism. But in that, you know, we were these good black boys, speaking good English. Yes, sir, your manier. We played rugby. It's what they wanted, yeah. Yeah, we assimilated quite well. Choir, rugby, yeah. yeah. And we got very deeply entrenched with Afrikaner kultir, you know, the kair, the prize, the rugby, um, speaking Afrikaans, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we kind of have this advantage. We didn't grow up on a farm, but we have this advantage. So when we meet... Afrikaans people, we kind of understand yeah. the vibes and the jokes. Uh, <laughs> we understand the jokes and, and the intricacies and the differences. And I think even for the guys in Orania, they, they probably were pleasantly surprised yeah. at our handle of the Afrikaans language, of our understanding of their culture, our sensitivity. I'm adding this disclaimer because I can imagine for white Afrikaners and maybe even for the guys in Orania that don't use us as the benchmark of what black people are like. Many other black people have had very different experiences. They haven't been exposed to white Afrikaans people like us. Uh, they haven't flirted with white Afrikaans girls or had relationships with them. They haven't traveled and slept with and been coached with. And your favorite teachers are white Afrikaner and your best friend. I mean, I think of Johannes Portas, mm. who was my best friend in grade five, comes from an Afrikaans family. I had um, Weibrandt. In one of the, who used to come and sleep over at my house, we had Morne and Bianca, <laughs> who are our neighbors who'd come and visit. Uh, he wasn't Afrikaans, so but Lee Conway and his sister that would come visit. So we were deeply entrenched, and it also explains why I don't mind joining an Afri forum, why I, you know, I don't mind rugby and all those things, and why even with the racism, we take it with a pinch of salt because we kind of understand. We don't accept, never accept racism. Never accept a Masimba, but we, we, we kind of understand because we, we've grown up with, with, uh, to, with to, the, these people, with those I mean, people. I, mean, I, mean, I always find it weird because we're in pockets where behind closed doors we are extremely tribalist, we are extremely xenophobic, we are homophobic, we are all these things. But when some other group of people that are not us share or say things that might we are very quick to be up in arms but that's kind of know? how it is that's 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 it's, natural it, 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 but it's ridiculous though and so yeah, prejudice prejudice you know? is natural so so again if if you are willing to you, you're this homophobic guy behind closed doors but you are happy to interact with homo uh, homosexual people when it benefits you yeah, you know give me convenience give me this, there's, a, there's a type of hypocrisy so again one thing that you was saying is that he doesn't understand when you're asking around racism, he doesn't understand uh, a lot of these Afrikaans guys that preach that being racist or apartheid, yet are in spaces where they utilize cheap black labor. You know, if you believe in apartheid, then you do it, fam. You know, so again, you are saying you don't like black people, but black people are good enough to look after your kids. I don't like black people, but black people are good enough to come into your home and clean. I don't like black people, but black people can build the homes and build the thing. Like, it's so hypocritical. So here I'm saying, Woodsy, if you want to truly believe in separation, you know, then you do this and then tell us how that feels. Is it really in the spirit of separation? He wasn't talking about, because Aranya's like that, Aranya's like that, but he was just talking about how he, he doesn't understand the hypocrisy mm. of people that will say, I'm racist, however, come through and be a nanny for my one-year-old child. Mm. It doesn't make much sense if you actually break it down like that. We drove around the town before lunch. Uh, we got to see some of the homes, very basic, you know, very modest homes, not mansions. It's yeah. not like in Popo or in Venda, oh. where there's like double, triple stories. Gotcha. Very basic, one story, very modest homes, different types of homes as well. Um, they said they like the color green and white and some of the old Dutch style. I was fascinated at how many different materials they use in their homes. Some of the homes are made from brick. Some of the homes use some futuristic 
brick material. It's called a gas, gas butane. I forgot the name. It's a type of brick. It uses cement and gas bubbles. Apparently, you can saw it, but it's it's very strong. That was pretty dope. Um, there's a house made of straw. There's a house made of straw bales, bales yeah. that are covered with cement. There are houses made of wood. Uh, just this is just in terms of where they live. Yeah. There's an area where for poor Afrikaans people that come to Oran and can't afford, they can rent for cheap. It's almost like not an RTP program, but it's a program for poorer Afrikaans to be like. Come stay here for cheap, we'll subsidize you and then we'll help integrate you into our economy so that one day you can buy or build your own home, yeah. which is quite special. Their property market has boomed in the last couple of years to a point where some of the properties are extremely expensive, uh, which is great for the people selling houses in Orania, but not great for the, the, the ethos of what they're trying to do there because they're not trying to create a property market there. They're trying to create a home for mm. Afrikaans people. So if you drive around the town, you'll see some properties have a tequip, you know, a for sale sign. They are modest homes selling for over 2 million rand. Ridiculous, but very pretty. One, um, one of the stories, or few, two of the stories that I really liked, one of them was there's a shop for electric tuk-tuks, which are powered by solar. Their own company, I think it's called Alexa. And these young, maybe 14, 15, three Afrikaans girls drove by in one of these Alexa vehicles. And you were like, yeah, those girls uh, run a cleaning service. So after school, they knock off, they get their little electric tuk tuk thing, and then they drive around town offering to clean people's houses. That was pretty dope. Um, Sorry, it's amazing how e-youth, that's the Oranya work. Even when you're telling us about the tunnel, not the, not the tunnel. The pipes. The, 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 the pipe system. The water pipes. The water pipes. So they've yeah. got this water pipe um, system that they built. And it was built by a 16 year old or he did the two the boys model. 15 and 16 year old and, and you look at that and you try and think about within our communities and you're like for us a 15 and 16 year old time you school in and then come back and play playstation you know oh, not playstation but like for them being 15 16 you need to work you need to work on the farms you need to work building this this, this community like for them your age you know it's 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 not like how we view it and that uh, that really hit me. Yeah. Would see how when as especially as a father, would see the things that their eight year olds can do and are doing versus what our eight year olds can do and are doing. Yeah. It's worlds apart. Yeah. Our sixteen year olds can't do what their eight year olds are doing from a practical point. I'm gonna emphasize again what Pinson was saying. A lot of construction work. Um, I'm still focusing on the residential aspect. Yeah. A lot of construction work, houses are being built, houses are being fixed, things are being repaired. The, the streets are immaculate, the homes are immaculate. There are parts of the homes that are a bit old. You can see them. Some of them are still part of the old Orania ghost town. What, what was the farm before? Um, we can speak about the history of Orania another time. Um, so there are some houses that are not clean and neat, but it's because people are not living there, whatever the case may be. The other two stories that touched me is there's a beautiful double story home there. And you just told us, or three stories. Um, not three-story house, three stories. The one is this double-story beautiful home that apparently this man built, Ian, Ian Man, by himself, mixing cement, laying brick, doing all the finishings. If you were to see it, you would not believe it. Right up the road is another stunning home. Yours tells us that it was a couple. They were over 80 years old, I think 82 years old. They came and they built that house with their own hands, an opa and an oma, old man, old woman that came through. The only thing they asked the neighbors to help with was the mixing of cement because of the, the strenuous aspect. But they built that home themselves. And then when we went to the other side of, of the, the main road to another house, your stops and he asks us, what, 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 what's wrong with this house? What's wrong with this? So we have to guess what's wrong with the house. And it was like a pop little joke. But he was like, this is one of the only houses that you'll probably ever see that has been built by an all female construction team. Beautiful home built only by women, you know, so that's that's really really inspiring So I just wanted to add that aspect of mm. what I remember about some of the homes um, There before we and, speak and, about economy and the, and, and the art talking about the the the, the, the town is, is, is the statues There's there was this beautiful stairway that reminded us of uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil Rio de Janeiro yeah. like, with, with just that artistic feel so if you've ever been to like a town like a Stalin boss or you know, those type of areas where you really feel like the art is integrated within the town. You know, these statues, the creativity, the murals, all this is so beautiful. And it's in that town. And you're just going, yes, that's, you know, if it was us, those statues would have been stolen. This would have been broken down. You know, the maintenance of it. 
you know, Kona, a question Ubo was asking, is it safe? For the residents of Aranya, it is beyond safe. You know, um, just watching how they walk around, um, I felt comfortable enough to like, while we're at the restaurant, leave my phone and my wallet on the table, uh, left, went inside, went, uh, come back, your phone and your wallet. Uh, in the kumbi that we were in, we'd leave our stuff there, the door would be open, and we'd carry on going in there for a meeting, we'd come back, everything was, things that you wouldn't dare even think to do in Joburg, we were doing it there and we just felt so free. Yeah. So for the residents there, I don't know if you're an outsider, but for the residents there, it is beyond, beyond safe. Like that, that's, again, is another thing that just blows your mind. Before I speak about the economic part, <clears throat> I'm seeing some, some negative comments and it's okay. We don't mind the negative comments. Um, we can only share our experience. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we can't share your experience or other people's experiences. I did emphasize that we were hosted by the CEO of the Oranya movement, um, Jost Stredom. He obviously had invited me. So obviously the hospitality was going to be good. Obviously they were going to be maybe on their best behavior. That is our experience. You may be negative, but if I may ask a plea just from me, don't be negative without going there. It's kind of unfair and it's very ignorant. If you've ever been to Oranya and you've experienced racism and you've been called a kafir or kafir, or you've been shot at, or if you know someone who's received racist or who's had racist incidents in Oranya, please feel free to share them. Because that becomes your experience and we can't tell you, no, that doesn't exist, that's yours. But if you're going to tell us, no, Rania is not like that, but you've never been there and you can't quote any racist incidents or like it's kind of lame and it just makes you look bad and makes you look like a hater. It makes you look divisive and it makes you part of the problem we have in the country. We can speak about the Rania project and what may be wrong with it in your opinion, which is OK, and we can debate it. We're currently just telling you about our two day, very short. We don't know what else lurks in the darkness of Rania, but just our little two day trip there. Mm. So when you're gonna have like negative comments, please try and back them up with like some, some information, maybe your own personal experiences, but don't just, if you've never been there, you can't just say that place, you've never been there, bro. Guys, you're allowed. So, so well, that's not fair. Oranya is so. a town. Like, what do you mean you're not allowed? You're allowed. You, you can drive through if you, you, it's like driving through any town. It's like so, driving through any town. You literally this, drive through the town. There's this misconception based on nothing. Like when we were there, people in Oranya greet. Yo, guys. Yeah, yeah. They, everyone, they, everyone lifts everyone, their hand up and they greet the there, whole time. There's sorry. many times where I'm sitting, I'm a black boy sitting by myself. Old people walk past Mora, Mora, Mora. They greet until Exo was complaining that his hand is tired. Or he's tired of doing this. He's tired all the time. Everybody's like Mora, 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 Mora. Everyone greets. The Great. students there, when they walk past, they, they lift their, 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 their little bait. Their, their bait. Their cats. And they greet. The, the, co the college students, everyone greets. So a lot of the things that I am part of those people that thought you're not allowed to, you'll get shot. Blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you that everything changes once you experience it. So again, it's easy to talk about swimming if you've never been in, in, in a pool, if you've never been in any ocean, any river, dam. But it's very different once you've experienced it. Yeah. And then you can chat. So a lot of us, we are good here in Yembebe, but pra, 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 isn't this Nazaz? So again, as Luna was saying, we're just talking about our experience. That's all. Someone else might have a different experience. Great. Let's listen and learn from them. Yeah. It might be totally different. We will, if, if there's things that we express that were negative, we will share. We're not getting paid to talk positive about Aranya. We don't get secret shares in properties or nothing. <laughs> so we're just literally just talking about our experience. Guys, we bought our own coffee with our money. So I walk online now where people are like, oh, they went out of it. No, we went there out of our own. We paid for the transport. Yeah. We paid for the petrol. We paid their, into their economy to get in return. So yeah. there was no favor as with now we have to sell something because we are getting money. This is not a paid ad. So you need to understand that it's just our experience as neutral as we can. And if there's things that are shit, we will say this was shit. And if things were great, this was great. Again, before I go to the economy, I just want to add, I'm a black person. Uh, I've traveled a lot around the country and to other countries, but specifically South Africa. There are many hostile spaces in South Africa. Black people can attest. There are spaces that ordinary black people are scared of going to. Parts of Alexandra, um, parts of Soweto. Um, there are neighborhoods, white, yeah. Indian, yeah, colored, I'm not so okay, Hill, the Cape Flats, yeah. Hillbro, Yeovil, which feel hostile to a lot of black people. There are places where when you get there, you literally 
hold your things because you're nervous. There are places that I've heard from white people that feel hostile for them. And we've heard horror stories, of course, of tourists especially being shot, being mugged. We ourselves as black people have been mugged, have been attacked in certain spaces. Um, if Oranya was that type of place, I think we'd see all the stories. I think it would be pretty clear and straightforward. Unfortunately, we don't have those stories and unfortunately, we didn't have that experience. But we need you to know that even if there have been bad experiences there, there are parts of South Africa that are also hostile uh, as well. And I think that's, that's very important. Besides the friendliness, we get to the economy and part of the tour before lunch uh, was seeing they have a pecan farm. Pecan farm, which is a big part of their economy. They used to export to China, bring foreign currency in. Now they work a lot with local uh, suppliers who they supply wholesale and then they export to other parts of the world. Pecan nuts bring in very good money. They also export, by export, I'm, I'm saying export out of Orania into the rest of South Africa and overseas uh, wheat and maize on the same, on the same uh, land. They rotate, they use a lot of technology. Their pecan nut farm, um, it almost looks like hydroponic farming where there's like sprinklers that focus on each individual tree so that they're not wasting uh, water. On top of that economy, Orania is very much self-funded. Uh, maybe we'll get to, and maybe, maybe it's not for me to discuss now because it's one of the conversations I had with, with the son of, of one of the founders of Orania. But Orania is very much self-funded. Most of the things they do, they raise money within the community. People put in a little bit of money, they fundraise, they sell things, etc. And initially, and this is maybe the another part, because I saw one of the questions was, do they really have their own currency? It's been said that Orania has a currency called the Aura. The Aura is not a currency. So I, I need to clear that up for people that don't know. The Aura is not a currency. And now let me take it a step back. APSA used to have a mobile branch in Orania where they'd come every now and then for the locals there to be able to do business and to bank and whatever. Over time, they realized that look, this branch is not profitable, so they stopped. There was a lack of, I think he was a farmer, Dr. Lucas, Lucas Talyard, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Lucas, I don't know if he's a doctor, but Lucas Talyard, he'd drive to, I don't know if it was Hope Town, one of the nearest yeah. towns, 40 k's out, yeah. 40 kilometers away to go and do his banking. And he started offering the people of Orania, bring me your checks. I'll go and I'll get the money and I'll do your banking, etc. And it became this thing that over time, it started to become a stock fell. Where some people would bring bring their checks or bring cash. Some would start loaning from this little stock fell that they'd set up. And eventually they built a cooperacy, like a cooperative bank, which I think it still is, probably moving towards a mutual bank. And today they have the, it's almost like kiosk, Ua Eska at the end. The K-I is not there, O-S-K. Uh, Ua Eska, the Orania Spar and Credit, I think, which is like a co-op mutual bank. The cool thing about it, which is something that people like Kontabele and Dikhoti are trying to do with the YWBN mutual bank. Everyone who banks with the Ua Eska is a shareholder. By, by banking there, you become a shareholder of the bank which I think is pretty dope. And you can loan money to build your house, you can loan money for your farm, you can loan money for your business. And as the bank makes money, whatever profits are made are shared with the community. Lucas Talyard worked with someone who I think was an actuary in financial services who joined the town. Their name is Tash, T-E-R-S, -T Tash uh, Schumann. They came and they built the OSCAR and that's what runs the economy. So they decided now from the OSK, one of the things we don't want, which a lot of black people talk about a lot is money comes into a black township. Let's do it the other way around. They say money circulates amongst Jewish and Asian neighborhoods 16, 18 times before they leave. In the black township, money stays for six hours and then it's gone. So it's in the is ah, So they were worried about the same thing and they're like, we need to circulate money here. And they emphasize that this is not something you need to Orania. They, they borrowed this concept from somewhere overseas. And they're like, how do we preserve money circulating here? And how they did that is through a voucher coupon system. And that's how the Aura was born, to say that we will trade with each other in the Aura. And the nice thing about the Aura is that when you have it, you cannot use it anywhere else. So if you have an Aura, you are forced to spend it in Orania. And in that way, they ensure that their money circulates there. It's pegged uh, parity to the rand. So one aura is equal to one rand, which means the aura voucher coupon is backed by the rand. And the cooler thing, now this is for people that understand finance, 
is if we've got 100, 300 rand, Exo's got 100, Penson's got 100, I've got 100, we put it in the bank and we create these vouchers like Monopoly money where we trade our real money sits in the bank and accumulates interest while we're trading with this Monopoly money. So your real money sits somewhere. You create this voucher system, which is not really real money, but it allows you guys to trade because you trust it, like Bitcoin, like crypto. And then from there, any time you can go and withdraw that real money. And at that point, it's earned interest. And, and, and. so I, I think that's pretty dope. Please just chat about the land, because I'm reading a question with Nathan where he says, how are they offered the land in, in Africa? Because I, sure. I, like, I really think a lot of us, we just don't have the knowledge and we make these assumptions and we carry them and we spread them around, you know. So again, like you, anyone can buy land in this country, guys. So that land, I don't know if you guys have been to the Kuru. It's dry. No one wants to live there. Dry right? ass. Dry. There's nothing, you know. So that land was up for auction, you know. And what happened was they went and they bid and then they lost. And they came second, I think, the, the story. Yeah, they were second in the bid. They were second in the bid, but unfortunately, or fortunately for them, the guy who won the bid then couldn't pay the, the, the money for it. So they called him up and whoever was at the time, was it Karo Boshov, whoever the name was, said, hey, um, your bid for a million rand is, is, is second. A million rand and 50,000. And 50,000 is, is second. A million and um, 50,000 rand. Do you guys still want to purchase the land? So it's like okay. buying a farm. These guys bought a farm. So think about it like that. Think about a farm where people bought and then they built. We don't go who half for Stain City. Stain City is also, uh, it excludes based on economic factors. These guys exclude based on cultural practices, if I can call it an exclusion. So again, your mosque that you go to excludes you based on a religious uh, 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 premise. So there's all these pockets that we understand from an economic point, Stain City, from a mosque, religious reason. Do we understand that these guys want a space for their own cultural practice. So again, it's you buy land, you, whoever you may be, and you can say within my land, I'm gonna build an estate that is catered to people that believe in uh, Ushembe. And I'm gonna make sure with it, in order for you to come and live here, you need to be a practicing member of the Shembe church. And that must be your checklist of things. And again, there's very limited people who can speak as Zulu, who are Ushembe, who maybe are not black. So Tina, we've chosen to use black as the main thing. They, on their PR side, I'm not saying it's true. I mean, I agree with it or not. I'm just saying from their point, they say it is based on culture, Christian and Afrikaans culture. So that's how they use as whether you can come live there or not. Yes, I didn't see black people there at all. At all, at all, at all, at all. So I think that's pretty whack. But with that being said, people are so angry. Yeah, people are angry, but like again, when I go to, I've been to a mosque, I've been to so many mosques where I didn't see people that look exactly like me. I didn't see a bunch of Kulmizu that look like me. A lot of the guys look like Arabic guys from the Middle East, but I didn't throw my toys out the cot. I've gone to many uh, private estates where I see like 99% white and I didn't throw my toys out the cot because they spoke English and they went to whatever Banbani college. So again, we need to just be very cognizant of some of these things. Understand, you can go buy land. They bought it from your government. It wasn't like secret. They steal this. They bought it from the government. They bought it from the government. And then they started building on these farms. A lot of people that live in Aranya are people that bought into the farms over around that area. It wasn't just move blacks from this area. There weren't people there. It was a farm that was auctioned. And that's how they started building. Yeah, look, I don't want to steal some of the content because I said had two really dope podcast sit-downs with you straight on. The eightfurende hoof van the Oranje Beweging and um, meneer Karel Bosov, who is the son of Professor Karel Bosov, who is one of two slash three founders mm. of Oranje. Um, I think Dr. Chris Juster is another one and I forget the other person's name, but I'll try and get it. I'm not sure if it's Dirk Human. I'm, I'm, I might be mistaken there. Um, a, a lot of angry sentiments. And look, maybe, maybe let me take a moment because I don't want us to entertain the, the negative negativity. Um, I understand why people are angry. And it's, it's not for me to explain. I'm not Nelson Mandela. We didn't sit at a fucking Kodesa. <laughs> We're not the ANC government who negotiated and got BE shares like your president so. We, we understand the anger and how polarizing a place like Orania is. We understand how it could trigger certain emotions, um, how it could inflame some of the thoughts that we have around white supremacy, uh, Afrikaner nationalism, racism, 
people that experience Afrikaans racism every day. There are so many nuanced um, and different shades of what Orania is. There are many white Afrikaners that hate the concept of Orania. They, they don't think it will ever succeed. To a point where I think it's the built, if I'm not mistaken, I took pictures of caricatures. You know, Zapiro does these cartoons, I think in the Sunday Times, where he normally laughs at our politicians. The built had these ca uh, caricature cartoons back in the day where they thought this thing of going to live in the desert was a stupid idea and it was never going to work. Um, yeah, Orania as a place is not liked by a lot of people, understandably so. Yeah, that makes sense. And the people of Orania really have a craving to get the world to understand. I don't necessarily think you need to agree. I don't think you must clap hands and, you know, you, you can still be angry, etc. But it's for you to, to understand. There were, it's, it's not apartheid land where, where black people were shafted off. If anything, it was a ghost town. Um, it was set up initially to build one of the dams there. There were engineers and other people brought in. They built some basic houses. houses. Once the dam was complete, the people left the houses and it dilapidated. And then over time, they decided to auction that piece of land. It was 800 hectares. And then the, the three founders decided to then uh, bid for the land. After bidding for the land, they came second. The, the number one bidder couldn't come up with the money. So then they offered them. This was not money that they had. They were academics. You know, they were professors and ac academic fellows. They went to different people and they fundraised a thousand rand, whatever the case may be. You know, kind of how Afrin Forum works. Um, kind of like how our churches work with tithes, how stock files work, um, how so many different things work. They just went to fundraise from different people. Mm. They eventually raised the money and they bought this piece of land and they started moving people there. Very small group of families moved because everyone else thought people were crazy. And from, I'm not sure when, they started off very small, a few hundred families, if not people. Got to a point, I think, in the early 2000s where there were like 1,500 people. And now they're currently on 3,000, close to 3,000. And they're trying to build capacity for 10,000 people. And they've grown from 800 hectares to 10,000 hectares. Even the ownership structures are complex and we didn't even get to them because mm. it's not owned by one person. It's not owned by one organization. It's not like in Gonyama Trust under the Zulu Kingdom and Umiso Zulu, which has 2.8 million hectares in Wazulu that is under the custodianship of the Zulu King. Mm. So it's not like that. It's different structures. Other people, from, from what we were told there, bought pieces of land and wanted to add those pieces of land to the Oranya movement and, and the vision. So... It's a polarizing piece, but it's for us to just share our experiences and yeah. there's so much more to unpack. But I was just telling you the story up, up, to, we, up to when we got to lunch. Need to give a quick shout out before we speak about lunch and the great Duomeni, Bain, that we spoke to there. Um, Meneer Peter Bischoff, who's involved with the development and the vision, the spatial planning, town planning, which is something a lot of us as ordinary South Africans struggle with in informal settlements, rural villages, and townships and even in suburbia they've they have built this plan of where the schools should be where residential should be where businesses should be which is pretty dope and they've got this vision they showed us the plan Minier peter yeah. bischoff pretty dope uh, gentleman um we were also um, given a tour by tians vessels who's in charge of their um, what is it so phelan phelan's i forgot what it's called but it's their safety center um there's an ambulance there's something for people that are potentially going to drown. They've got two boats for the dam. They've got a firefighting unit. There was a lady who was in a car accident and they had to get jaws of life. They've bought their own jaws of life. Um, a lot of those things have got off-grid energy, by the way. And they've built their own clinic. They've got their own doctor. They were even explaining to us that for a private uh, health care institution to exist, you need at least 6,000 people in that area for it to be approved. Um, and because they only have 3,000, it doesn't work. But the people... It's almost like their own medical aid scheme. The people pay like a little bit of amount, a little amount every single month so that they can fund their own doctor, their nurses, their medical center. And they've got a helicopter a pad, a helipad, mm -hmm. um, where they make sure that the patient is stable, that the person's fine. And then the nearest hospital in Kimberley, Bloemfontein, they come through with the helicopter and they take as, the as person. The, so. This question is popping up again. Which the question yeah. is around unforeseen events like COVID emergency. Uh, SA asked... Funds globally, Oranya, 
Uh, what did they do to sustain themselves during COVID? Did they borrow money from SA? Guys, Oranya doesn't need anything from us, from the rest of Africa. They, they need nothing. Right now, even with the Ori, Oriso, you know, so they say, Muti, already, like, they, they are, like, 35% off the grid. 30%. You know? Oriso, Oranya, solar. Solar, yeah. yeah solar and they said by end, end of April, they're going to be 60% off the grid. You know, because they're getting a battery. You know, and yeah. again, by I'm thinking by the end of the year, they got the they are the ones that are going to be putting power back into the national grid. Yeah. You know, so by the end of the year, Oranya is going to be 100 percent of ESCOM and it's going to be putting energy back into the grid. Hey, you I know? don't know by at the end of the year. Didn't you say September? Hey, I'm not sure. Okay, whatever the dates may be, sure. but I know which by they said which by the end of April they'll be 60 percent off the grid. You know, to 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 a point where they. Going back to COVID and borrowing money, they need nothing from the government. You know, they need nothing. They they don't rely on the government for emergencies because now they've got the ambulance, they've got the doctors. They don't rely on the government for bricks, for there's nothing. And on top of that, while relying zero on the government, they still pay taxes to the South African government. So you're relying zero, no electricity, no street lights by the government that are built there, no stop streets by the government. So they rely zero financially on the government and they still pay taxes to the government. Yeah. So you need to understand that. Let's go a couple of steps back. <clears throat> South Africa became a British colony. Um, and before that, there were Portuguese settlers, people like Vasco, Vasco da Gama, Obama, yeah. uh, Bartholomew, Diaz, and, and others. And then it became a British colony. And then after that, the National Party with Afrikaners took over the government. Black Africans didn't rely on a government for foreign aid and money and those things. We did things ourselves. We had our own livestock. We had our own farms and crops. We built our own homes. We obviously didn't have like fancy things to build roads and those things, but we took care of ourselves. Oranya is something like that just with technology. But because they clean their own homes, because they build their own homes, because they grow their own food, because outside of the commercial farming, they also have their own vegetable and fruit gardens. Um, because they teach their own children, all those cool things. They they don't need money. There's no like, franchise like the rest there. of us. There's no pick and pay or yeah. a spa. It's, so, it's so, a local economy. Yeah, so they, they don't need a, a money the way that we need money. Secondly, because they do a lot of things themselves. A lot of the money that is borrowed by the South African government is for number one, um, social grants and social welfare. So a big chunk of the money goes to paying grants to close to 29 million people today. People that go to schools for free, the teachers need to be paid, the schools, the infrastructure. People that use free clinics, free hospitals need to pay. There's no government um, clinic there. There's yeah. no local police station where you're going to SAPS in the town. Yeah. They have their own private security. Yeah, so sometimes the police in the area actually ask them to help because they don't have capacity. Yeah. So, so, Tabang is, so they have to now utilize their own resource to go to the next town where the South African government is meant to maintain. Now they're asking these guys to go out of their way to go assist. Yeah, so so they don't need help like us. Where you don't have money in terms of ingenuity, you do things yourself and you make it work. And after doing that, you also sell. That's why they have an economy that exports. So when they're not exporting, it's like, okay, that money is not coming in, but we're going to carry on doing the things that we do. And it's okay. And understand, even during the COVID uh, pandemic lockdowns. It was two years. There were a lot of ordinary South Africans outside of Oranya that were surviving without money. Some people got retrenched and they made it work. Some people moved home. Now you move home to a place where it's a township. Um, it's a place that your parents have paid off. There's minimal cost. That's what these guys have mastered. Running a town on minimal cost where they do a lot of the work themselves. They don't need government to clean the streets. They don't need government to pick up their refuse. They don't need government for all these things. Therefore, they don't need to loan money. For a lot of these things, um, oh, mine just ended. Your live video ended, but yeah, you can can you can share it and then create another one. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to say anything. If I must carry on with lunch, must carry on. No, carry on, carry on. While I'm busy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you just invited a very open-minded Duemini. I think it was Duemini Bain, Ronald Bain. If I if I got his name incorrect, I'll, I apologize and I'll fix it. And he was emphasizing two things about Oranya, the foundation of the town. The first thing is that they are Christians. You cannot live in Oranya if you're not Christian. You can be as Boer as you want. You can be as Afrikaans. You can be Kurt Darren. You can be Steve Hofmeyer. 
You can be a white supremacist. You can be Donald Trump. If you are not a Christian, you are not allowed to live in that town, unfortunately. So you have to embrace Christianity as a core. Number two is they believe in own labor. This is something that I'm still struggling to wrap my head around. Own labor. What does that mean? Like, the collab means that you are a collab. What's collab? Collab with now you timeline. You can try it. Maybe it will trigger me, but I, I won't really approve. But it, it should be okay. The concept of own labor is something that ordinary black South Africans don't understand. Let me paint a picture. Excuse me. A black person will wake up in the morning and get out of an RTP house. That RTP house was not built by you. It was built by other people, maybe not even from your town. Then you go to your local clinic, which was not built by you, where the people working in that clinic probably don't even live there. They live in the suburbs somewhere. And you send your kids to a no-fee, free school, where they get fed, maybe through a feeding scheme where the tender was given to someone from out of town and the teachers maybe also live in suburbia. You will then walk past, after collecting your ground, you will walk past a Pakistani Somalian's puzzle shop and buy your bread and buy your basic groceries. And while you're walking past there, you'll see a lady getting her hair done by a Malawian, by a Mozambican, etc. You will see Ubers driving past, driven by other people. You will go and pick up things that are being delivered by Afrikaans people. You will go to a shop owned by an Indian person. You'll go to town and go to China Mall. China City. Dr. Bain speaks about the tithing and how there are different ways to show gratitude to God. Part of it is money, which we've kind of accepted today, tithing. But he says a fundamental one that people have lost is labor. I will labor for God. And he was emphasizing that you cannot give God a product of labor that is not from your hands. And he said this is one of the mistakes that the apartheid government and Afrikaners back then made. And some Afrikaans people even today. They will take the labor of black people, exploit it, and then say to God, here, this is what we've built. And he's like, but that's not yours. How can you say you're grateful with labor that is not yours? Like I said, it's a concept I'm still trying to wrap my, wrap my head around and maybe I'll find a better way to articulate it. But Afrikaans people... Christian Afrikaans people get to Orania, new, new residents. And they struggle for months with this concept of, I must clean my own house. No, but isn't government going to pick up the litter? No, I'm going to call the, the lady to come and clean the toilets. The white Afrikaans woman has to clean the house and clean the toilets. They're the poop. She has to wash the clothes. He the has man to has to work, fix the things. He has and to work the garden. He has to work the garden. There's no... Moses, who's coming to do the garden. There's no, ah, let's just call an Uber that's going to come with some foreigner that's in there. There's no puzzle shop. There's no shop there where it, they do these things themselves. And if it's not them, it's people from their church. It's their neighbors that work with their own hands, which also means that the people, they are constantly working. There's no time to sit. There are no beggars. There are no lazy people. There are no people with nothing to do. People are constantly working. We have fundamentally lost that. You know, it's one of the things that humbles me, by the way. But like service day is so different. Because even what you were saying, we see the, the guys in the municipality, if I can call it that, none of them draw a salary. It's a municipality. Yeah. They, they've got a unique municipality. So it's none of them for draw a salary. So think about that. You know, for us, one of the things that kills me is when, is when you hear people that want to get into politics. The first thing they say, we see, they want to get into politics, sit up, sit up, sit up, sit up. I've never heard a person, honestly, now say they want to get into politics because they want to serve, you know? And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that you're going to draw a big salary, or at least you're going to have the ability to get into tenders or move in such a way where your personal financial or business interest gets served. And for them, it's totally, totally different. It's a matter of, I want to serve my community and therefore I know which I'm sacrificing my time, my labor, my efforts, purely for the fact that I want to see Oranya get bigger. There's no money involved. I'm not getting paid. You know, so I'm going to work during the day as a butcher, whatever the case may be. And then I'm also going to uh, extend my expertise on how to be this, this, and that, just so that our town, our community can grow. That's something very different. And that's something we've lost in this country because everybody who gets into politics is power and money. Yeah. Um, 
I think we've been going for an hour and maybe we'll need to do a part two on another day. Yeah. Um, had a lekker lunch there. You can, you can taste that a lot of the food is organic. Their yeah. bread products, it's roasted bread or home baked bread. You can taste the meat. You can taste, you can taste meat that is organic. Um, that is not processed and those things. A lot of their food is, you know, you can taste their tomatoes, their onions and their food that it's, it's local. There's a nice sign there for one of their pubs. I don't think we had a chance to go there with Boer Beer. You know, they've got their own beer brand as well. I don't know if you came back with a bottle. You yeah, left I it? Back. No, I came back with a bottle. Souvenir. Yeah, no, we, yeah we, they've got their we, own we, Orania we beer. We've got to enjoy it. We've got to enjoy it. Yeah, I think... We're good? Yeah. Oh, they had a, a Susati's. A Susati stick with Vors and uh, flavored pop. Flavored Uput. You like that? Yeah, yeah Exo like that a lot. Oh, a lot of flies. Because it is still desert. Oh, there's a lot of flies there, man. And it's hot. It's hot in the summer. Flies like that. It's cold. It's I, cold, I, I, in, the, I didn't it's cold in the winter. Like that. No, there were flies, bro. I remember. No, yeah, flies. But I didn't see them like something for me to remember. I didn't think like that. Ah. Anyway, so I think, I think we'll have to shut this down. I don't know if Pinson wants to say anything else, but that was um, lunch. And then after lunch, we set up for the podcast. And then because of, in the interest of time, we set up for our next podcast. Uh, and then we went to have a lacquer braai on that day. We came with Karol Bosov here straight home. There was a gent uh, from Pretoria. James. Uh, he works for a radio station. I just don't remember. James is his name. He's part of a Pretoria band. Radio. He's part, huh? Pretoria Radio. Pretoria Radio. He's part of a band with Aaron's Roots of Afri Forum called Soms Vendi Wolf. Uh, they perform at a, at a place called Rumors, they said in Randburg. In yeah, Stradon Park. I'm going to go check Stradon them Park. Out. Yeah. yeah, Soms Vendi Wolf. Um, we had Rian, who gave us a tour. The next day, we'll speak so, about yeah. that in so part two. He's in two. charge of Orisol. Uh, or, Orasol. Uh, Rian uh, or, Jacobs, Orasol. I think, is his surname. We met another lady the next day who runs Kurania, which is their local newspaper. But that's probably going to be for part two, the second day that we were there. Um, and we'll finish off day one properly as well, including the podcast setups, you know, going to Karol Bosov's office and all the books. Um, maybe touch on some Afrikaner history. You know, there's, there's certain things people don't know about Afrikaans people. And Afrikaans people are very proud. They're like Zulus. Zulus are very proud. They're very proud. They're very stubborn. This was one of the things that were emphasized. Uh, the other thing that was emphasized was um, they are definitely racists in Orania. We didn't encounter them, luckily. But they are racists when in Orania. Openly, we didn't encounter. Yeah, we didn't encounter any, any racists uh, openly, but they definitely exist. Um, but the town is trying to get people to understand what they're about. Again, you don't have to agree with them. It's not for us to agree. So, you know, we were there to go and record podcasts, to go visit the town and just go and see what it's about. And now we're sharing our experience. Yeah. And maybe some of you guys can make a turn and go visit. Um, see if you can speak to the people that run the town. It doesn't have to be used. There are so many other people there. There are so many projects involved there. Go on a, on a learning mission. Contact the Oranje Bewegen. Um, you can go on their social media pages and go visit and have your own experience and share it and see if you can learn. And besides learn, maybe this is one of the things that maybe we can discuss in future that we also go to teach. Because when we get there, we share some of our experiences and thoughts as well. And you don't know how much of an impact that some other people get from just experiencing you. They're like, you know, I, I hadn't thought of things like that. I didn't notice something like that. Thank you for teaching us this. You must understand some of these people that we were visiting there, they watch our platforms. So they listen to some of the conversations. They listen to me sitting with Dr. Umar Ifatunde. They listen to me sitting with Joshua Maponga. They listen to me sitting with Vuyo Zumula, with Ntlantla Lux. You know, they listen. And, and you can imagine, they, they may not agree, they may become inflamed, they may get triggered, but we're here to learn and to grow together. Uh, I don't know if Pinson has anything else left yeah. and then we can so, shut it down. Yeah, just, just as a wrapping up, for me, what, what, what I took out is just the parallels between, uh, let's take, uh, for example, the Islamic faith. We would say, if you ever have friends in that faith, those guys are not anti your religion. They pro theirs, proudly so. So just always have that mindset. We would say, what I experienced, I thought about Oranya in a place where it's racism, or it's a place that is exclusionary, if that's the word. It's not necessarily that being, but more pro them. They have no time to be focused on the ANC government. They're not a political town, so you're not going to see DA posters or Freedom Front posters. They have no time to be focusing on the political landscape of South Africa. 
they they don't those people don't want to vote they 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 okay with just focusing on themselves they are pro them for them by them and that really 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 uh, stuck with me but we waste a lot of time and energy focusing on them and not enough time on focusing on us not enough time building us not enough time cleaning our homes they very very clean people clean your home clean your mind clean your spirit clean your body make sure what in those are in order uh, dr jordan peterson talks about focus in rather than focusing on the speck in someone else's eye focus on the log in your own eye rather than focusing on how racist other communities are focus on how tribalist you are the fact that you talk down to other pe uh, black people because you feel like you're lighter than them you know the fact that you talk down to other black people because you feel like you economically higher up than them because you feel more important than them for whatever reason so just understand what you, all they've done is that they pro them they don't have the time the energy the resource to be anti you they are pro them and yes a lot of things i personally don't agree with the same way that i personally might not agree with everything in the islamic faith in the christian faith in the i don't agree with everything that the petty guys do or the nigerians do but i understand that they are allowed to be pro them and they're allowed to have their own spaces within the context and the legalities of the law they're allowed to have the, their own spaces and i i'm agreeing with you to each their own i wouldn't want to do that but they want to do that and they have that right to do that if you want to have your own place buy your own farm create your own community live within the ethos and the morals and the principles that you guys belong to and mean i'm not going to be mad i'm going to be understanding that you've created your own culture because you're tired of seeing our sisters twerking and showing off their bums or you're tired of the corrupt system that we live in you're tired of being scared because of the crime you're tired of being you know marginalized because you light or dark or not tall enough not short enough so you've created a space that is in agreement with your own principles morals and values and that's what they've done are they perfect no would i do it no but it's for them to do and that's what i saw so again we'll we'll unpack further day two but for now I'm this is quite soft man my TikTok just restricted my video for 10 minutes because it claims we're promoting substances and tobacco and those kind of whack things but for people that maybe won't see this uh, on my TikTok for whatever reason, I just want to say thank you to everyone who was on my TikTok. At the point where I'm shutting this down, we had 142 uh, live viewers and we hit over 18,500 likes. 18,600 likes. So thank you very much. Thank you to everyone on Pensim Locho's Instagram live for tuning in. Thank you to everyone on my Facebook live for tuning in. Please share this video. Um, let's learn from each other. Um, again, if it makes you angry, I'm a thank Facebook you so much, Lisa. We appreciate so. that. Thanks, thanks everyone for for joining in. Um, yeah, I'll just yeah, as, as, as we shut down the Facebook as well. Uh, it's on 130 live viewers at how the did, time. How did it go there? It was on 18. It wasn't yeah, on 18. It froze. Uh, oh, these things don't update. It's I because mean, our Mark Zuckerberg and those. Oh, so, 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 nah, it's probably more than. But we appreciate you guys. Um, look, we we can't do much. We are not political. You guys didn't vote for us. <laughs> We're not being funded. I know some people are like, yeah, Rob Hersoff funds you. That's why you must lie. Yeah, that's not true. But it's okay. You know, I, I think... I mean, I think fund it, guys. I mean, I'm easily buyable. So, I think fund it. I think fund it. I think I'm going to put it in the soft. So, I mean, I was going to say anything. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Robbie, as a beef, help to steer. Yeah, man. Um, we're literally doing this out of out of our hearts because we're trying to make uh, South Africa a better place. We're trying to be sensitive to all the different races and cultures. I have a personal dream of turning South Africa into a Springbok country with a Springbok economy. We don't have to be the same. We don't even have to like each other, but we can work towards a common goal. Sure, sure. And that's to have a strong economy. That's to make sure we're competing and defeating other economies in the world. That's to make sure that our streets are safe. I'd like to think all of us, black, white, colored, Indian, would love to live in safe spaces where our children feel safe. Um, we'd like to make sure that whoever's in charge, whether it's political leaders, religious leaders, traditional leaders are doing their job. Um, our education system is ensuring that it's transferring skills to the people that need the skills. Um, and we just have like a really, really great country to live in. You can be Christian, you can be Muslim, you can be Buddhist, you can be atheist. Um, you can be Afrikaans, you can be Zulu, you can be Tsonga, you can be Ndebele, you can be Tosa. You can hate whoever you want to hate and want to be by yourself. You can be part of his ZCC and live in Moria. You can be part of Ushembe. 
You can live in a township where there are no white people. You can live in a lacquer colored neighborhood with all the brainos that say out there. You can live with the Indians, you know, and do what you want, but that's so it's, racist. It's really up to you. Um, but we appreciate you guys jumping onto this live and please help us continue becoming better representatives for you guys and we'll keep going into some of these spaces which are very polarizing to extract as much good knowledge and education as possible and when we get there to try and share and relay some of your thoughts and concerns and ideas on some of those spaces uh, so that they can also learn you know from people that are sort of impartial and a bit more sensitive uh, to them as well oh, i am finished pin all the black pen pen and pen oh yeah boom all day <laughs> See you guys soon. We're logging off. EXO, I'm going to finish this. 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 Is this the liquid that you were complaining about? Do you know? When you mentioned Oranya beer. The Burbi. Burbi. And tobacco. I don't know what they talk about, man. It's just haters. These platforms are not ours, so... When they see we're doing when we're doing dope things, they try to shut us down. Anyways, twenty thousand nine hundred likes on TikTok. That's big. Is it? Oh no! What you are seeing is people that were gifting me. So at the end of this live on TikTok, there's gonna be money that's coming my way. I love you guys, man, and I appreciate you. Hopefully, when Facebook stops being a hater, I'll be able to earn money from Facebook. And when YouTube can allow the comments to stay. Because I know people give me super thanks and those things on YouTube. So much. No, it's sitting on my account. It's not a lot of money though, but it's it's appreciated. What's not it a lot of money? Well, we'll see it when I'm done here. Ooh. You see this gift. Some look. The other things I guess we have to learn over time. Because you, you can also ask these little gifts that people say, the heart. Uh, let's see what else. Man, you you keep on No, when it gets saying. to a certain amount, you can you can. But we need a TikTok creator fund in South Africa. That's one of the things we need to fight for. Just mm -hmm. like in other parts of the world in America, for the kids who are creating dope content um, on TikTok to share in some of the ad revenue. Mm -hmm. We're tired of watching ads on TikTok, but the kids that bring us to TikTok are not sharing in that ad revenue. It's mm -hmm. wrong. It's really, really wrong. So yeah. Anyways. Okay. That's cool, man. Let me shut it down. Love you guys. Have a great Friday. Take care of yourself. It's all love.